Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, hi, I'm Cassidy. If it's not, thanks for always tuning into my videos. Today is the start of part two, episode two of the dragon vlog. So about, I honestly want to say about a year ago, I put out a video that was you guys helping me choose which books to read next. And it was 25 dragon books and you guys voted on which ones you wanted to see me read. I should get those. And out of those 25, you guys picked for me Aragon by Christopher Polini, Dragon Mage by M.L. Spencer, and The Prairie of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. The results on that video were not the best. I DNF'd Prairie, I really disliked two stars to Dragon Mage, and Aragon was just like fine, three stars. So I'm hoping that I know my taste better than you guys know my taste. Today's video is me picking three books from those 25 books and we are going to read them all together. They're obviously all dragon books. There will hopefully be another choosing my dragon TBR video coming soon. I just need to do some research and find some books. But to start today, I wanted to pick my books based on what you guys picked. So you guys picked for me a YA read. So here's my pick for YA. Fireborn by Rosaria Munda. This one just really sounds like I could love it, even though I'm not the biggest YA reader anymore. I'm really excited for this one. I'm not going to tell you anything about these books because I will when I'm vlogging them. Once I actually know more about Fireborn, I'll give you like a synopsis then, but this is just me telling you why I'm picking them. So yeah, we have a YA. You guys picked me a traditionally published, more modern fantasy style story, so I went with one of those as well. The Waking Fire by Anthony Ryan. I am obsessed with both of these covers. Battle of the cover off almost, because I think both are just like really, really pretty. I'm really hoping I love this one. I've heard nothing about it, like I don't know any reviews, but it sounds really good. It's like The Waking Fires, part Indiana Jones, part Pirates of the Caribbean, and part Mistborn. It's got wonderful, memorable characters and great action. I loved it. Oh, that's my blurb by Django Wexler, who's one of my favorite authors. So that's looking good for it. I'm so excited to try this one. It will be my first Anthony Ryan. I'll tell you more about it when we get to reading it. And lastly, you guys picked me an indie adult fantasy, although personally I think Dragon Mage is YA, but most people refer to it as adult. But really I think what mattered here was that you picked me an indie fantasy. So I went with an indie fantasy. We're doing The Reborn King by Michael R. Miller. I'm excited for this. I actually forgot that this book existed until I rewatched the video and was like, oh, because now I own ascendant by the same author and you can expect to see this book in the new version of choosing my dragon tbr but i'm very excited to read this one because it's like his first work and then this one will be like his newer work because this is the series he's currently working on so those are the books and let's get into reading hi i've started fireborn by rosaria munda and guys I'm pleasantly surprised. I am two chapters in and I mean I picked this for myself. I had a feeling that I could really like this one but knowing my feelings on YA I am I am a little bit terrified of it. So I'm not far in so like there's plenty of time for my feelings to change. I've literally read two chapters. My drink is way too sweet for me today. I got I ordered a cold, grande cold brew just with two pumps of mocha and then I just wanted um cold foam on top and they ended up making it a sweet cream cold foam and it's just like a little too sweet for me but I'm still enjoying it. It's still delicious. It just kind of tastes like chocolate. I'm not gonna lie with the mocha but anyways I am roughly 46 pages. Actually that's more than I thought I was and the setup in the story is really good. I think that this story does a really good job of making you understand our two characters right away and their feelings and I, re I felt very connected with them within the start of their POVs. Like the first chapter is his POV, the second chapter is her POV and within seconds of starting each POV I was attached which is a really good thing and I'm not a character driven reader all the time but like I do like strong characters and so I think I might like this just because I seem to already like them. From as far as I know, Fireborn follows two friends who grew up in an orphanage together and became like best friends. There is a boy and a girl. As they're training to become dragon riders, they end up being separated by class again because 
although they never knew it growing up, he is actually like destined to rule. He's from the regime that got taken down and she is kind of part of the like rebellion. And then as they grow older, they start to figure those things out and things start to like get in their, their ways. That's what I assume it's about just from the back. And it's about like their friendship. I think it's friends to lovers. It's YA, so I'm expecting them to get together. I'm I'm actually very excited. I really like the dragon setup in this. The second chapter is watching like a tournament of dragons and like matches with their dragon riders. And I think that that so far has been really interesting to see like how the dragons fight. I love that kind of like setting too with like kind of like the training. It's like almost, it's not a school setting, but like it's like a, it's like a test almost and I think the setup has been done really really well already I'm really enjoying this one I'm excited to keep going I hope it's a win for me let's just get back to reading I have nothing else to say I'll update you probably 50% in somewhere like that and then at the end <laughs> y'all are in the microwave and I just think that's freaking hilarious anyways I am Whew. About 150 pages into Fireborn, and I'm loving so much of this book. I definitely will tell you that it's YA, it reads YA. If you're not into like YA characters, oh my water's boiling, so you're gonna hear that. I'm making myself lunch, um, just like noodles and dumplings. <laughs> so ignore the water boiling. But it is YA. If you don't like YA characters, you're probably not gonna like it, but there's so many conversations in here that go above and beyond what I feel like you get in YA a lot of the time. We're following the remnants of after of what happens after you overthrow the regime and overthrow the kingdom. They talk about propaganda in this. They talk about like how it power corrupts. And it's done very, very well. And I know YA books do talk about these things, but I just think it's done as more of the sole focus of this story where lots of YA books that's like in the background. What I like about adult is maybe having those conversations be more up front. The other thing I'm really liking about this is the mirroring of the two protagonists. So we have two protagonists who are going on journeys and their paths, their arcs in the book are very similar but they make different decisions. We have literally a moment where they're like hanging out with a someone of another gender to them that they're kind of interested in maybe but maybe not each character makes a different choice and I think it's really interesting to see how even though their paths are very very alike they make different choices and there's just like a lot of mirroring back and forth which is something I really liked about Ashes of the Sun too so so far I'm just here to tell you that I really like this and I'm so excited to read more um bye you'll hang out in the microwave for a bit longer I am 74% into this book. I'm still loving it. I've connected to these characters in a way that I haven't connected in to characters in a book, I think, for a really long time. There's something about YA fantasy that when it hits, it hits. So um, this has reminded me why I shouldn't give up completely on YA fantasy, but why I definitely need to be pickier about the ones I pick up. All I can say is like the characters in this have made me proud so many times. They've also... I think are going to rip my heart out. I have a feeling that the last 25% of this book, my heart is going to be ripped out at where they end up. I just know it. I just know it. Like, I'm not prepared. I'm not prepared. I don't want it. I don't want it. I should just stop reading now. But, like, I can't. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, I'm keeping reading. five stars <laughs> you know what there are some issues in it but I'm gonna run through the rating system but like I'll be shocked if it got, does not get five stars just like I assumed five stars you aren't seeing this at the same time but um, today I also did my 24-hour vlog that went up earlier this month I think and I read gleanings in that which means today I read two five-star books that's fucking incredible but I cannot coherently put thoughts together on this besides that, like, I loved this. So tomorrow, 
I will tell you all my thoughts. See you then. I broke out my I am not a bookworm. I am a book dragon mug that Bobby bought me for my birthday last year. I never drink out of this because it's my cup of chaos pick, but for the dragon vlog, I had to wash it and use it because it's perfect and I love it so much. But we have lots of things to talk about today in this clip. We have Fireborn to review and an unboxing to do because I finished Fireborn and I adored, adored, adored this book. It was a five star read for me, potential to be a new favorite series, potential to be a favorite book of the year. This book does what so many of my favorite books do. Let's just hold these up. I would probably count all of these favorites because of the conversations they have, which are the same conversations that Fireborn has. Just like in all of these books, Fireborn talks about the good and the bad of war. It's not afraid to talk about the brutalities of war, of government, of all of those things. So just like all of these things, there is talks on politics and on governments and talks on either side what happens, which I think is just a beautiful conversation to have. It's a conversation that I live and die for obviously in my books because it is a theme that I think I'm always trying to pick up and I think that there is so many ways that you can do it. Because we follow two characters, one who came from privilege and one who came from nothing and they're now supposed to be on equal footing in the new regime, we see how they react to things so completely similar and so completely different based on how they were raised and what they know of the world. You struggle throughout this book, I think, I will say, um, I think Lee is unanimously the favorite when I look at Goodreads, everyone loved Lee and I also loved Lee, but I found myself wanting to root for Annie. I felt like Annie was the person I should be rooting for because of everything that goes on with her. And I think Annie's arc is very intentional to make you not really love her at the beginning and, and you end up kind of feeling more for her and loving her more because that's also what other characters do throughout this story. She has an arc that she's trying to prove herself and she's also trying to believe in herself. So I think that it's a very intentional arc, but I do think it's why we gravitate towards Lee. But I constantly had to remind myself, like, I should be rooting for Annie. Like, why am I rooting for Lee? He said everything handed to him. And I think that that is like, just like then opens up conversations on humanity in general. And why am I rooting for him when like, Annie obviously has to persevere more, but like, you know, there's this whole beautiful discussion in these this book that I really, 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 really enjoyed. Now it is YA. There's a YA romance that is very heavy. Like people in the reviews say like there's light romance, all of these other things. Like it is a slow burn. It is friends to lovers with like a bit of enemies in between and it's like a weird take on it. But like the romance is like a main part of this. So I feel like if you didn't like the romance, if you don't connect to these characters, you won't like this book. But if you're willing to give this YA book a feel and give these characters a chance and like root for their romance throughout the pace, then you like could love this book the way I did. But I don't think it is for everyone. It definitely does feel like a YA book. And I would have preferred it to be adult. Uh, just in terms of my own reading taste. But like I still gave it five stars. And this is why I um why isn't there's nothing wrong with YA. I always feel like I have to say this when I talk about YA books. It's just not my preferred vibe anymore. I prefer the conversations often that we're having in adult books, but this one does it beautifully and this is why like I don't I've never given up on YA books. I still pick up the YA that I'm interested in. I just pick up a lot fewer than I used to. Anyways, I love this for like so many reasons. Also, I think the dragons in this are pretty cool. I saw people wanting more. It's my preferred style of dragon fantasy. I've learned I don't want the dragons to be like the first and foremost part of a story. All the dragon books I love tend to have dragons as secondary characters. They're there to like add to the world, but not like necessarily a main element of it. Like you could take the dragons away from the story and still have a beautiful story but the dragons add to it in such a beautiful way. I loved the dragon fighting. There's a tournament in this, kind of a school setting. I think it's beautifully done. I really enjoyed it and I highly recommend everyone to pick it up. I also have like tabs in here because like I loved things. Uh, Maria told me that each each title makes it into a line in the book and like 
I am obsessed with this this phrase. And as with the gods, the world quaked to see them fireborn. The way like this entire scene happens and then you get that line was just breathtaking. There's so many scenes in here that I was texting Maria like, oh my God, I'm not ready. I'm literally not ready. I cannot wait to pick up the second book. It's definitely going to be on a TBR soon. But let's do an unboxing. And also this is the next book I'm gonna be reading. The audiobook from my library just came in. So I'm planning to start it as soon as I'm done 11th cycle, which is not part of this vlog, but it is my indie archive top tier book club pick. So I need to finish that and then I'm gonna start this. But I have a package and we need to unbox it. I know what this is because it's the only thing I've ordered from the Broken Binding recently. I don't order a lot because they are expensive. I'm kind of frustrated because I did email the Broken Binding to cancel this and three days later they shipped out so it wasn't possible anyways. But I am annoyed that no one ever emailed me back. Like no one told me I couldn't. So like that's just a little frustrating for me. I am I think that they're doing a bunch of like big changes right now so maybe my email just got lost which is fine and like I'm okay the fact that I couldn't cancel it because obviously it was like way too late. It shipped out really fast after. It just would have liked a reply back. But anyways, let's unbox this. I'm excited for what it is. How the frick do I even open this? I hate doing unboxings so I'm terrible at opening things. This should be easy, right? It should like pop out of this part. <laughs> okay, we're gonna cut it. I don't need the box anyways. Oh, there's tape. Maybe that would be why. So the only reason I canceled it is because I didn't like the edges when I saw them like in a picture in person. I liked the digital mock-up a lot better. Um, and then I haven't read this series, so like I wasn't sure I was gonna love it and then not loving the edges as much was my reason to cancel it. But hopefully I will like them in person because it was still a photo that I saw. I just felt like they kind of looked a little bit like drawn on and not what I want what I wanted them to look like um a lot of people still love them they're still beautiful but yeah oh this box like really opens it's wrapped and secure so let's hope that I just like when I read this series I absolutely love them and then I won't feel and I won't yes I'll be happy that I couldn't cancel them um, it's hard. I find it hard to sh sell things in Canada. So like I guess like if I don't like the series I could resell them But I don't know. I feel like we don't have a prominent like reselling for like special editions the way the UK and the US does But also our shipping is really expensive. So Sometimes I don't like when something's like really pretty wrapped because I'm like now I have to destroy it Wait should I open the top one first because the top one should be the first one, right? You would think because it has the sticker on it. I'm hoping that that's how they determined. Ah, oh, it was the second one. I was wrong. Okay, I do like them better in person. Like that, that's okay. It doesn't look like, I just felt like when I saw it in the picture, it looked very drawn on, but I still love the naked of these. Like the naked is so pretty. So I have to decide whether I'm leaving the dust jackets on or taking them off. I don't own a lot of special editions. This is my like, these would be the second order of special editions I've ever ordered. So, like, I'm pretty picky with them. Um, I don't know why I got trigger happy on these. Like, normally it's only if I've read the book and I love it. So, I only own Prince of Thorns by Mark Lawrence. Oh, yeah. These are better in person than they were. Should we look at them naked? Like, that is that is so pretty. I own the paperback of this. I need to read it. Feels good. Feels heavy. That in that end paper is literally gorgeous though. Okay, and then just like look at that. Like this naked cover is stunning. I do love the covers for these. <gasps> this end paper is even more stunning. Look at ooh. Look at that one. And like look. Look at that naked. These are stunning. Okay. Maybe they did me a favor ignoring me. <laughs> um just like I'm obsessed with black books too so like these spines are beautiful like I don't even know if I want to put the dust jackets back on like I always room dust jackets when I don't so we'll see maybe I should leave the dust jackets on until I decide till I read the books and then know if I like them I should really get on this and read these anyways thank you for coming to my book unboxing I will update you with my feelings on the waking fire sometime soon for you guys at least <laughs> Actually, 
One last thing that I actually am gonna complain about for these that I just noticed when I was putting the things back on, I wish they took the blurb off. I'm paying for a special edition. I don't need someone to tell me this is the hands down best fantasy novel I've read. Like I'm already paying for it. Like I bought the special edition. I, I, I think it kind of makes the cover slightly ugly with the blurb here. It would have been way prettier without them. I don't know why they wouldn't. Like keep the blurbs on the back of the book. That's fine, but like not on the front of the book. But even then I like kind of wish the synopsis was here and not the blurbs because again, I'm paying for a special edition. I don't need the blurbs, but my hot sense on special editions. Like if I'm already paying this much money, why do why do you need to tell me? But maybe I'm a weirdo. Hello, I'm a hundred pages-ish into The Waking Fire and I'm conflicted. I am liking lots of this book and then there's some stuff that I'm struggling with. I'm not really sure the plot yet. We're following a world that is under control of something called the Iron Ship Trading Syndicate and that control is kind of slowly deafening. They have a rival that's kind of competing with them, but we follow this trading syndicate trying to like be back on top. We have characters who have, who play parts in this adventure-ish journey of making the syndicate the top dog again. So what I'm struggling with this is it's very dry. The characters kind of run into each other like they do have personalities yet don't all at once they just like their voices sound very the same like the tone of how they're written sounds very similar which makes it hard to like define between the three of them but they do have some sort of personality it's just really really dry to me but what I'm really liking in this is the magic system. I think it's really cool. We are in a like modern world, like there's guns and stuff, but there's dragons and there's different types of drakes. So there's black drakes and red drakes and green drakes and their blood burns humans, except for select few who are tolerable to the blood and they can like use it as magic. And each type of drake has a different magical property. So like the green blood from a green drake can help you con communicate across like miles and stuff. Like you go into like a, a trance where you just like communicate with someone who also can use the blood. So it is like really interesting. I've never seen a dragon book done this way. Um, I don't read a lot of books even within this setting and things like that. So like I am really intrigued at this moment in time, but I'm struggling with the dryness of the story. I'm hoping that that the more I learn about the characters, the more I learn about the plot that's going on, the more I'll like it. It's also set currently on ships and I do like how they power the ships and I think that's like an interesting tidbit. Like there's just a lot of cool like world stuff going on. We within this but I'm not sure it's for like character readers yet but I will let you know. It is blurbed by two of my favorite authors so Django Wexler and Mark Lawrence. I'm hoping they don't let me down but I will see you in a bit. I'm thinking about DNFing. I'm 30% in. I don't know if this is the book for me. I don't know. I don't know. I read a review that said the last half is better than the first half so like I should maybe stick it out. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm gonna keep you guys updated in the next clip when I decide whatever I do. I think I'm DNFing this. I'm at chapter 15-ish, 200-ish pages in, and I'm just not feeling this book. I'm really, really sad. I really like the concept of this and the magic. I would love to continue reading it just for that, but I don't see this getting more than a two-star, personally. I'm so unconnected from anything happening in the story. It's just very dry. 
and there isn't a lot like I can't fully tell you what the plot is there is like a small plot happening but it's relying more on the characters but I don't care about the characters like I can barely tell them apart if I'm not reading along I have no idea whose POV I am in so it's just not working for me. I'm so sad because I actually already own another book in this series, but obviously if I'm DNFing it, I need to get rid of it. And I love this cover. So I'm really, really upset about this, but on to bigger and better things. Hi, I am 18% into this book, The Reborn King. And normally I come on here at 18% and I give you a synopsis of the book, but I'm not gonna lie. I don't, I don't, I don't know where this book is going. <laughs> so far we follow our prince who is a dragon and now in this world something has happened to the past forms of dragons so they are not what we think of. Like they used to be like a big, you know, massive flying dragon but now they're very more like human-like and there's three races within this world. There's humans, dragons, and fairies and our prince is a dragon prince and dragons are stronger than humans are. And at some point they used to look like regular dragons. So I'm hoping that throughout this series you're gonna get back to that like regular dragon looking thing because like I like that style of dragon. But what's happening within this, is that there's a war with these three races against the demons and like the demon king. And so we're following them losing the war and I'm thinking what's gonna happen during this book is that like obviously we're gonna have like a chosen one and the prince is going to be like the person to save the day. Um, where I'm at in the book now, I just got to a time jump. I'm liking the book. I'm a little confused at parts. There is two POVs but like one POV we don't go into a lot and when I get into that POV sometimes I'm confused that I'm in that POV like it takes me a while to like realize it but I do like our prince's POV and I kind of like the questions he asks his father within the first chapters um he's not afraid to say like his dad is doing something wrong as a ruler but also to like accept him as the ruler and I, I found that was like a really interesting take there's also like a conversation on faith because the king believes in like an old religion but the prince doesn't and there's like interesting conversations there i'm excited to see where this goes i think the prologue of this book is very strong it involves the demons uh, so i'm excited to get to there at this point in time we're kind of spending time with the wizard pov and i don't really like that pov also like a lot of fantasy names so i'd probably recommend reading this not listening to the audiobook but the audiobook is really good i have no idea how long i have left in the audiobook just because i bought the trilogy as a whole because it was one credit so why not just buy the trilogy instead of the first book which like audible i, I wish it told me like when the first book ended when i buy a bind up audiobook i don't know these are just ramblings anyways i'm liking this one enough but i'm just like slightly confused at this point but like excited to see where it goes hi i'm dnfing this book oh my lord i'm not having good luck with these dragon vlogs I had to ask my patrons to see if it was even okay. Like I was like, there's always a lot of pressure to finish books for vlogs and to get content out for you guys. And I kind of feel weird DNFing two out of the three books. But they said it's okay as long as I'm like talking about why I'm DNFing at them because they'd rather just hear my thoughts than have me suffer through it. And then I can get more content out essentially because I can read books that I'm loving and I'll read faster. Um, This one, I was just not feeling we spend the first 100 pages getting to know these characters and what's happening and this war and then we have a scene where our main character is about to die like he's literally on his deathbed and a wizard comes and instead of healing him because for some reason that takes way too much magic he turns him into an infant again i don't know how that takes less magic than healing someone um to go back 18 years of life and erase all of that i it just it, i was so confused when that happened i don't even think it was well explained and i kept reading i was like okay i'm gonna keep reading i'm gonna like trust this 
And then we flash through 18 years of this person's life really quickly. And it's like he's a brand new character. And it's just like, why did you even set me up with the character development of the first 100 pages? We could have started the book at the point that we're at pretty much had the prologue be the scene where he almost dies. And then chapter one could have been him as a 19 year old and having the talk with his like new parents. And in this talk, they're telling him who he is, that he's actually a dragon and that, and that he's like the prince of dragons and things like that. And our main character just goes, okay, that sounds about right. Like, there's no deep thought about it. He doesn't sit there and go, what the heck are you telling me? He doesn't like struggle with anything. He's just like, yeah, sure. Give me my sword back and I'll go beat the bad guy. Like, I just... I wanted more. I wanted some like definition to the story. I wanted that. And then on top of that, like I just couldn't tell you, to be honest, what makes these characters dragons versus humans. I mean, they're stronger. I do know that they're stronger and all of that, but like they are human essentially besides that. Like there's no, I don't think that there's anything that makes them look more dragon-like. I know that they can see in the dark a little bit better, it said. I don't think this is what I'm looking for when I say I'm reading a dragon book. So... I'm DNFing it. It didn't work for me. And I'm just moving on from there. We're moving on to bigger and better things. And new vlogs. Sorry to disappoint anyone, but I'll see you in like the final outro where we talk some things. And through. there we have it, the end of the vlog. <laughs> and did I learn anything in this vlog? I am very picky with dragon books. I think that is what I'm learning from these experiments. I have a specific type of book I like, and I like that dragon story. I'm not the biggest fan of a lot of dragon stories. Like, putting the dragon instantly into a book does not make it work for me, but I'm still gonna keep trying them. I still love dragons. Like, the dragons in Fireborn are sick. I wish I had seen more dragons in the parts that I read in the Anthony Ryan one. It was more that the magic came from dragons. You never really saw dragons. And in The Reborn King, they just weren't really dragons, let's be honest here. Interestingly enough, in both of these videos that we did, the YA read was my favorite. <laughs> now, in the one you guys picked, this was a very mediocre read still for me. I, I wouldn't call it a favorite, but I enjoyed it the most. But in this one, this is a five star contender for favorite book of the year. I cannot wait to continue recommendations for this will continue to go out. Books like this make me still believe that I love dragons so much and that dragons can add just so much to a story because like I did love the dragon scenes in this and I can't wait to see more of these dragons. I don't think I had a least favorite in this one because I DNF'd both The Waking Fire and The Reborn King. I don't think it's fair to say that one was my least favorite. If I had to continue on in one though, I would be continuing on in the Anthony Ryan one, but I'm not continuing on in both. So I don't know what that says about my thoughts. And if we had gone back to the last video, I think I also would have DNF'd Dragon Mage if I hadn't had to read Dragon Mage for a book club. Like I didn't love Dragon Mage. So I don't think there was a winner in Dragon Mage or Priory either. Just these ones. Do I need to read more YA dragon books? I keep telling myself I don't read YA that much anymore, but like, do I need to find more YA dragon books? I'm having a crisis now. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'm hoping to redo this experiment again this year, so keep a lookout for another TBR dragon video where you get to help me pick my dragon TBR. I just gotta do some research and find some books. Maybe there'll be more YA on that list. But anyways, thank you so much for hanging out with me during this. If you have made it to the end of this video and you'd like to leave me an emoji just to say you were here, we're obviously leaving dragon emojis. But bonus points if you leave a dragon and a fire emoji. And then if you want to talk to me in the comments, I would love to hear your thoughts on any of these books or anything like that. If you've read Fireborn, let me know. And then if you'd like to connect with me on other platforms, my books are on my book Twitter, my Goodreads, and my Patreon are all linked in the description bar below. Have yourselves an absolutely remarkable day.